next session will be in English and it will be under the knowledge of knowledge navigation, position, direction, and speed. Professor Rian, who is the founder of Resting, uh, which is actually an advising company, advise from the future. My privilege to be able to address you this uh, afternoon. And we will speak on the theme, as uh, said here, knowledge, navigation. We will speak about knowledge, we will speak about navigation, we will speak about leadership, because this is important to connect. So having said that, I probably need the clicker, maybe. No, here it is. Clicker. Great. So I would like to start up with the navigation issues. I think I've been working on navigation of knowledge the last uh, 30 years. The last uh, five years in resting, uh, advice from the future. But before that, as a global leader in PwC of government and global organizations. On that time, I worked a lot with the World Economic Forum, the uh, future of uh, urbanization and future of governance. So it's about navigation. So let me say that when we navigate, it's about three things. Position, direction, and speed. And it's, of course, important to get the dimensions of business intelligence. Very often, it's business ignorance. We need to come to intelligence. And it's also about to get the right speed of the re renewal on a company, personal level, corporate level, whatever it is. Having said that, it's about going out from this position, trying to see that there is a vision. Without vision, people will perish, as we know. It includes companies and cities and nations. And this is the kind of direction. OK, we find a direction. Now the question is, how do we navigate to come to this place? And how do we know that we have, we have arrived into this place? So you can go this direction, or, or this uh, kind of journey, which is like a sailboat taking out the big turns, and you're not coming into the real, uh, I would say, unity. You, you go on the wrong direction, and then you go wrong again and again and again. It's a long, long journey. I would suggest that this is the way to navigate, to understand, to make a shorter distance, because you have business intelligence, you interpret weak signals in the market, in society, values, technology, whatever it is, you try to combine it. You try to do something as, it, as your own knowledge. It's an asset uh, connected to your values and your own visions to understand. So what is then you have to look about? What, what are you looking for? And I would say you are always looking for the future of something. Future of what? Future of technology. OK, is it AI? Well, it's one thing. Uh, it's about values. Individualization, what does it lead to? A link to family issues, et cetera, et cetera. Skills, trade and commerce, logistics, the new value chain. Maybe we don't have a value chain anymore. It's gone. We have a value star. We have a value loop. We have a value web. It's different. It's very different. But people count as to have a values, value chain. Yes, in a sense we have, but it's a global value chain. It changed everything. Industries are different. We had healthcare. Today we have well-being, as we heard from Panama. The well-being industry is huge. It includes the Nike shoes with some ship in your, in, your, in your feet, in the shoes, to connect to your cell phone, and so on and so forth. We go from, I would say, transportation, public transport, aviation, automotive, into mobility industry. So that's examples of how do we navigate our future of technologies and future of skills needed in your organization, and so on and so forth. So it's about knowledge, and it's about navigation. And the question is here, do we use this kind of um, uh, technology as a couple of hundred years ago was invented? Or do we use this technology as a GPS? We are online, we are, we are kind of, I would say, interactive. With this methodology, we are proactive or reactive. It's a different approach to navigate, to understand and interpret the different sources, to, to interpret the weak signals, or what, what is happening. What do we understand? So I would suggest we have both methodologies. We need the old time, the old wisdom. We need the new technologies. We apply it in a new way, and we connect it. And something will happen right away when we do so. This is a city. Who knows what city this is? City of Ragusa, Dubrovnik, on the Balkans. They had sustainable development in this city because the mayor sent it out 38 
dragomans to check out around the Mediterranean Sea what is going on in the, in the nations in Europe, figuring out what kind of financial things, what kind of social, intellectual, environmental, technological, cultural, and they had, you can say, a, a, a holistic view on capitalism, different capitals, human capital, intellectual capital, infrastructural capital, and so on and so forth. So capital does not mean money, it means head. The head of environment, the head of human, the head of innovation, the head of intellectual capital, and so on. So they have four, 512 years of sustainability. And when people came and tried to make war with them, they told them, please stop. We give you some knowledge. And they remained in peace. We later know that the, both the First and Second World War started on this spot. So it didn't, didn't work all the, all, all the way. But I would say the knowledge analysis, the business intelligence, is the, was the key for this city. And I think it's a role model for us looking into the future of what is going to happen. So if we take Ragusa, in a sense, and apply it to the, the modern city of today, we talk about different kinds of cities, and it should be intelligent and livable for the future. And it's about sustainable cities. We've heard it over and over again, and that's right. That's very relevant. But you connect it to inclusive cities. Yes, you can, to, we, you can connect it to resilient cities. You can connect it to the smart cities. And then it's about here, right here. What is the smart city of the future? Is it a community or is it a digital prison? Because of all technology now, now knows everything about you, where you are, what you do, what you think, what you say, what you're, where you're going, where you have been, and it's a perfect match. Ah, this is it. Is it also about the knowledge cities, as we heard of, the, the new initiative for Dubai? And it's about the wise cities. I think that's even greater, because wisdom is more important than knowledge. But without knowledge, we cannot gain wisdom. So the question is, and we can connect this to the issue which was discussed by Professor Lauren Probst about uh, skills. The word skills means the power of discernment. So the question is, when we navigate, can we discern between stupidity and wisdom? What to apply, not to apply? All knowledge is out there on the World Wide Web. What to use, what to utilize, what to refine, what to store, what to develop, and what to, how to cultivate this knowledge? That's the question. So Japan speaks about wise places, not smart cities, which maybe is an indication of something right now. And it's also about sensitive cities. Now we put the sensors everywhere, in the paper bag, in, in, in the trash cans, on the cars, in the fridge, uh, on, on, the, on the bottle of milk, and so on. Everything is connected. Internet of Things is here. It's great, but we need to look for the right regulations, the right uh, ethics to get this right for the next season because it's just started and there will be an exponential growth of you, a number of units and devices being connected. And the latest word, I think, regarding cities, which was quite uh, far away from Ragusa in the 1200th century, it's about the brain city, city of brain. Uh, so the city is like a brain who walks and understands and take actions. This is about both humans and robots. And here again, we need to see well, how can we discern the difference between those dimensions of technology. Intellectual capital, I see. So if you see, I see. Intellectual capital, a tool for navigation. And I would say on the base level, it's intelligence capital. Social renewal, creativity, social intelligence cultural openness, and so on and so forth. This is about society dimension. The next about structural capital, which is working when the, the guy's gone home from work, it's still there. It's not linked into their heads. It's in the structure. It's metho methods. It's concepts. It's processes, and so on. This is about the organization of all capital. And you can go for then the human capital, because without humans, nothing will happen. And this is about the professional competence social competence, leadership, and so on. And this is about the individual level. So we need to have a business intelligence and knowledge navigation on all these three levels. And but one thing in common for these levels, and that is relationships. Relationship capital is the key thing to being able to navigate. Think about a ship. 
The word leadership comes from a leading ship. Are you working on a leading ship or not? On a leading ship, the people on, on the boat are doing the right things, dealing with different things, checking out where we are going, steering the boat, and analyzing and helping the engines or the sails to get right. So having said that, I would, I would conclude for the first piece is here that we need to, as human beings, see that data and the whole thing of technology and big data lakes and so on and forth is very, very key important for us to make progress on every level, which means you can say that this is probably the world's most you know, valuable resource. And the question is, how do we deal with it? And I would say, without, we are drowning in data if we, are, if we lack wisdom. So this is about how we can extract, analyze, and take this knowledge out in a good way for the right purposes and reasons for the good of society and mankind. And you can also say that everything connects. Yes, of course, the navigation you will have of knowledge in different dimensions has a very strong digital dimension because of what is going on in society. So whenever things connect, you have to maybe understand more and more about these things. It's about AI, artificial intelligence, IoT, Internet of Things, virtual reality, augmented reality, big data, face recognition, blockchain, and we can go on and on and on. The cobots, by the way, collaborative robots. It's a kind of human being in a technical shape with metal and silicon and, and stuff, and then you have the humans. So how do they work together? How do we apply the sensors on the right places, getting the right information, not displaying all the data where we shouldn't display it? So open source is the most important thing, but you need the right boundaries for a city level, for a national level, for industry level. And in one minute, it's interesting to see how much happens on the World Wide Web. It happens a lot, really, really a lot. And I would say that this is all about what is happening now. 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 And then you can just extrapolate a lot of things. This is an incredible speed. Acceleration, exponential growth, etc., etc., etc. This is an incredible speed. What's the point for your navigation? Take a step back. Reflect. Think. Is this good or not? How do I use it for good? How do I develop it? How do we take a deep breath and debrief and share? and collaborate, and think. What do we see? What does it mean? What do I want? What do I do? And so on and so forth. There's a tendency today, when we think about knowledge, that it's about uh, knowledge management. I think, in my navigation, it's about knowledge leadership. I've concluded very often people are overmanaged but underled. That's why we sometimes are confused. We are stressful, we have lack of uh, vision and lack of passion and lack of mission and lack of those things which we need to have to be able to rest while working quite hard. So take a step back and then we have to define maybe the next piece, which is knowledge. knowledge is something in between uh, truth and beliefs, Plato said many, many, many years ago. So I would say we start with information and facts, we go to knowledge in a context, we understand, we apply the knowledge, and we have, get skills, experience, and we get wisdom because we get skills based upon our experience, what we do, and we can create welfare and good societal growth. We can jump from here to skills and say, there is a new focus on future skills and values and technology. How do we create this society in a great way? At the same time, I would like to say, there are a lot of shifts taking place from to. 
So if you double click on this little box here, we can see the following. We see from planning and mapping to navigation. We see from, intelligence, from ignorance to intelligence. We see from tangible to intangibles. We see from explicit to tacit knowledge and weak signals. We see from industries and sectors to ecosystems. We see from a personal profit to a collective purpose. Building society, building a company, building a community. From general, general education to personal skills. From boundaries to in-between spaces. You should, if you should remember one word from this session, remember in between. Growth and development and knowledge are always created in between. In between people, in between sectors, in between industries, in between nations, in between generations, 3G, 4G, 5G, 6G, yeah, in between. It's the knowledge created. From, from knowing to the unknown and from structures to relationships. We are human beings, we are social, we like relationships. We also see from centralized hierarchies to knowledge networks. We see from compliance to value creation, from financial capital to all the capitals I described regarding Ragusa. We see from full scale, which confuses people, to rapid prototyping, to test bedding. We see from knowledge cities to wise places to city brains. But also we see from planning, make a plan, to experimenting, to make an experiment. To, uh, make, to do orchestration and make improvis improvisation. We try, we try to play a jazz tune in a new way. We'll see, we, we, we figure out what's the tune, and here we go. And right at the sudden, we have created a new song, like the night in Tunisia. And then everybody plays it. So improvisation for knowledge navigation and leadership is a key thing to apply on the daily work. From technology focus to include ethics and values. Best practice to best option. Best practice gives us mediocrity. The real bad gets worse, get, the real bad gets better, the real good gets very often a little worse. So how do we come to, I would say, from best practice to best option? The question is here, best option for Dubai, that's the key. And people learn, we learn from knowledge to wisdom, and from answers to questions. So what's the question? Well, I would say the question is, do we create or consume a legacy? We can go home now, because that's the question. <laughs> that's literally your question in life. Do you lead in the in-between spaces, or do you just follow? Do you upload or download? My wife told me this morning that for the first time in history, this, the IQ of people in Sweden are starting to go down because people are downloading probably too much of the digital stuff instead of thinking on their own. Draw conclusions, to think, to reflect. And do we focus on research, which is evidence-based, and that's fantastic, but we need to focus on for search. It's not evidence-based. We have to try, we have to give it a try, we have to figure out what could be possible to do in this. And do you look and search, what, what are you looking for and searching for in your business intelligence? Something has happened with the slide. So let us go to uh, the next. And that's to end with, the leadership. I said the leading ship, leadership. It's connected also to fellowship, a bunch of fellows in a ship. So leadership is about if someone goes ahead of the others, the question is, are the others following? If no one is following, no one is leading. If no one is leading, no one can follow. That's an in-between space again. How is the relationship between those who lead and those being led? And you, I would say the authentic servant leadership approach, I would recommend to be able to have a great navigation, to have a journey together in fellowship, in a community, in a company, in a network, in a think tank, or in a do tank, or what kind of tank you like to have. It's about take decisions from the top, because you have responsibility. Legally, you have to decide. But it's also about serving from underneath. 
to, to help the organization to thrive. If, if, if you are successful, it's the staffs who should have all the, the grants and all the, the honor. If you're failing, it's your mistake. That's the attitude, I think. We are not steering from the top, pointing down. We are serving from underneath. At the same time, we have to put some limitations and boundaries around issues sometimes. No, stop, full time. We cannot move. Or we have to start to run with the flag, energize the people to come into the next dimension of strategic advantages, competitive edge, and innovation and disruption. So that's, to me, a holistic approach, integrated and situation-based. What is happening? Where are we? What do we understand in our navigation right now? And let me then take this and finalize my speech and say that the definition of a servant leader is to show the way, being ahead. And the question we have already asked, take responsibility, even if you don't have the formal power. Yes, and we have to solve it. We cannot allow this to happen to this person. We need to take responsibility. And I risk, I, I, I risk myself. I put myself at risk, but we have to fix it. This is not right. Create opportunities for others. Lifting and serving from underneath. Creating certainty, not uncertainty. Bad leaders create uncertainty because lack of relationship, lack of decisions, and so on. And you know what? If you take a decision fast and it's wrong, you can easily change it to the right thing. Having said that, this means authentic, transparent, and honest. It means not prestigious, we can change, as I said. We know where we have to go from inside. We know really what to, to drives us. We are mature and we are reflected, reflecting persons. We create multifold, not standardization and single fold. We are clear, brave, and humble persons. And we create trust. Trust is the most and biggest and best element to change people's behavior and to get on the right journey. And to be able to charge. The leader has to charge the organization intellectually, by knowledge, socially, emotionally, and you can go on and on. It's a charging station to be energized and to create, finally, meaning. To create meaning on that journey. So I would say thank you very much and go and create a great future, create a legacy, be bold and brave and humbled. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jan.